Greetings, Robin. Finally, my computer decided to be glitchy today. Uh, it is November 4th, 4th, 2015, and uh, Halloween is officially over. The sadness, the entire month that was October, our Halloween is officially gone. Whoa. Um, and that's very sad. My roommate has already started playing Christmas music, and I'm, I'm just done with the holiday season for right now. Um, but I was very excited to get to see your convention videos. I thought they were awesome and amazing and hilarious. You obviously put a lot of time and effort into it, which uh, is really impressive considering, well, how young you are and, like, how long you've been doing this. It's really impressive that you get to do all these panels and all these cool conventions because you've created this kind of community, uh, basically from the ground up, which I think is pretty fantastic. So you keep doing you. Uh, in response to your question, if I could host a panel at a convention, what panel would I do? And you're gonna hate me, and I can already, I can already hear the comments. I can already see them down there, like people ranting in the comments. But I would do a panel on the Bechtel test, on removing the Bechtel test, because I hate it. Uh, for those of you who've been living under a rock and don't know what the Bechtel test is, the Bechtel test is a common. Uh, test people use to judge whether or not a movie or a TV show is diverse with gender. So the Bechtel test is two female characters with names have to talk to each other without mentioning a romantic relationship. This makes me mad. Why? Because that's the that's all that it is. That's sorry, ignore my ringtone. <laughs> I hope that's not copyrighted. Oh well. Um, that's all that it is. So, in theory, two female characters with names could have a conversation in the first 30 seconds of a show or a, f or a film. Have you seen Supernatural? People die on there all the time. Um, and while the TV show or movie would technically pass the Bechtel test, it would still be super, you know, non-diverse and you wouldn't get to see any of these complex, amazing female characters. And that's why I think a show like Game of Thrones is so important, and it's really interesting because there's a lot of women. Um, or Orange is the New Black is almost entirely women, which people are like, that's, you know, that's discriminatory. There's no men. And I could point out a million shows, you know, several, several, several hundred shows that don't have any um, women in them at all. I think it's funny, the comments that brought, are brought up about Steven Universe is a lot, is I wish there was a male gem, not just Steven. And I'm like, hmm, it's kind of like having a whole group with only one member of your gender. Let's see, there's, uh, you know, Teen Titans only had Raven and Starfire, that's a little bit on a smaller scale. But if you think about some of the older 80s cartoons, you know, Chippendale Rescue Rangers had the one female character. Uh, you know, Mario, you have Peach. If people manage to include Peach, it's a miracle. Um, sometimes, you know, they don't even include Peach, or she gets taken away in the first 30 seconds, you never see her again. Um, you know, many animes only have one female character, or known female character. So, you know, when people say, oh, a show with too many women, you know, it's not gonna work, it's not popular, like, why aren't there any male characters? <laughs> I'm like, well, you can go, we have been waiting in line for decades in order to get strong female-led movies and that's what i think is so awesome like you bring up mad max fury road uh that just came out everyone's favorite character isn't mad max it's furiosa and rightly so because she was amazing in that movie so you know it's it's about nope not gonna say that it's about time that uh we had more diverse female characters and not just diversity with gender, but also, you know, race, orientation, different gender expressions besides male and female. I could go on for ages, but that would basically be my panel, is I would do a panel on diversity and how we need more of it and how it enhances um, movies and film and books and things like that, because I think that's really important. All right, so your question this week, Robin, is going to be really weird, and I apologize, but it is. So... I don't know if you've seen the new Star Wars trailer. I think you have, because you haven't been living under a rock. Um, but there have been a lot of theories going around on the internet, on Reddit and Tumblr, and some of the more uh, front pages of the internet kind of sites, 
that suggest that Jar Jar Binks is actually the Sith Lord that we see in the trailer. I know, it's crazy and stupid sounding and very unrealistic. Or so I thought, until I read the evidence. So I want to know your opinion on that. I'm going to post a link to the Reddit uh, thread. Um, where it talked about all the evidence it had and all the clips and references um, that point to him being the Sith Lord. So go check that out, read up on it, uh, and next week I want to hear your opinions and if you have a theory on who the Sith Lord is besides Jar Jar, I'd love to hear it. Alright Robin, uh, that's about it for this week and I will see you next Wednesday.